people are flocking for their Sunday breakfast. One of the big favourites in the Persian community is called kale poche, head and hoof soup, and it comes with all the trimmings. Kale poche, kale is a head and poche is a feet. So this is yeah. a very different Sunday brekkie. Oh yeah, it's different <laughs> from the bacon and egg and you know, the egg energy get Tuscany near the beach. <laughs> yeah, obviously. If that you Tuscany tried all that, come here. Of course, yeah. So for someone having this for the first time, seeing, seeing the head is, is a bit confronting, isn't it? Yes, yeah. Uh, first of all, I don't uh, serve it with a hole, with a bone. I just plate it up. You know, different uh, parts of the head, the meat and the eye and um, uh, the cheeks and the ears. You know, when, when, when you plate it up, it uh, looks like a uh, lamb shank. I make a, a bagani, uh, that is carrot, celery and pasta stock. Get that little bit uh, nice. extra touch, yeah. Then I have the onions. So four onions to how many yeah. lamb heads have you got? That's, I have around 20 and around uh, 150 feet. Uh, 150 feet? Yeah. Whoa. Baby, baby feet is quite uh, nice and tender. Then I put um, garlic. I never say no to garlic. And then I put some uh, cinnamon stick. That's a traditional. That's a great uh, so, flavor yeah, with lamb of, too. Of course. I put some bay leaves. Then I put the cardamom. And you like the green uh, in this? Yes, yes. Put some uh, turmeric. When it's cooked, it gives um, a yummy look with the lamb head and the meats, okay? And obviously, go for the uh, peppercorn. Mm -hmm. Good hand on the pepper there, Jason. And uh, at the last, the good old salt. Very simple. It's good here to get the turmeric to uh, all the parts of the meat. When it's coming to the boil, I simmer it down for um, another 18 hours. 18 hours. 18, 19 hours. Mm. And it's coming like a, a beautiful consomme, very clear. Ooh, yeah. lovely. This is more something that older, older people eat. Oh, um, yeah. Children don't eat this, really. Mm. It's something that you more acquire as a taste as you get older. So mm. I didn't like this when I was a child at all. Mm. It's only in the past couple of years. My brother-in-law introduced me to it. and. Um, he brings me every week, he picks me up. <laughs> He's a soldier, soldier of Calipoche. <laughs> this is actually sort of the broth that the Calipoche is cooked in. This looks like the, um, the easy part yes. for mm, a beginner. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I went the easy way and got the chick. That, yeah, that's, that's probably the best that's place, best place yeah. to start. And that's it? the most like beef. It tastes Thank the God. most like beef. <laughs> 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 mm. Mm. He said it was going to be like lamb shank, and it sort of is. Yeah. A bit like Absolutely. lamb shank. Yeah. Mm. Well, you have to be born as a Persian to eat that, otherwise no. You have to be born as a Persian to eat this. <laughs> you know what, I think you're right. <laughs> <laughs> Since ancient times, the Persians have used rice, not as a side dish, but as the center of celebrations. Cooking can take hours to make each of the grains just perfect and worthy of the title, the pearls of Persian cuisine. We make the rice with our heart and soul. We put a lot of effort in it because we love to make it. Nadia Sajadi knows all the rules. Her rice is legendary amongst her family and friends. Nadia starts by washing the rice thoroughly and adds rock salt, then leaves it for half an hour before pouring the rice and salty water into the pot with a few drops of oil. You see how they're playing in the water? They're having they're a lovely, lovely time playing in the water. They're having a lovely time in there, aren't they? When the rice is almost cooked, Nadia drains it ready for its second cooking. This starts by adding oil and sliced potato to the bottom of the pot to protect the precious rice and to create a golden crust at the bottom. It's to die for, really. Then she adds the rice, ready for steaming. Once the steam gets in the pot, if we put the lid in there, it takes the steam 
and traps it in so the steam doesn't go back in the rice. We leave it here for 45 minutes and then we serve it. Nadia then crushes saffron with a little sugar and adds water. The liquid ready to add to flavour the chicken, which is the side dish to the rice. This is cooked with a marinade of crushed garlic, salt and lemon juice. About one tablespoon. With turmeric, Persian mixed spice, chilli powder and black pepper added. It's mixed with water and some of the saffron liquid. Stir it around. Then spooned over the chicken and sliced onion. And covered with foil to cook for an hour. To assemble the polo, Nadia washes the barberry. Tell me what the flavour of a barberry is like. A bit sweet and sour. Ah, like a cranberry but smaller? Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Nadia melts a generous amount of butter and adds the barberries. It needs only a few seconds, really, otherwise they get burned and they get discoloured. That's two tablespoons of sugar. We just put it in, stir it. Uh, a couple of teaspoons of saffron. Okay, that's it, that's ready. Then to serve, she layers the perfect rice with the sweetened barberries, this. slivered pistachios, and a sprinkling of liquid saffron. Now, tell me what you're doing. This is butter and saffron. Mm. I melted it. I put a little bit in there just to finish it off. Wow, that's intense, isn't it? Mmm. It is incredibly beautiful. A little bit more of these now. The chicken around there to garnish. So the chicken's the garnish and the rice is the centrepiece. centrepiece. The added bonus of any polo dish is the golden rice crust that's created at the bottom of the pot, called tadeg. That's beautiful. Mmm. Not so crispy. Mm. Delicious. Good night. And then there's all this waiting for us too. <laughs> Please. Absolutely stunning. In the Persian community, sweets punctuate the day. From biscuits made with nuts and dried fruit to syrupy pastries and lavish cream cakes many with the flavours of saffron, pistachio and rose water. With his wife Sophia, Babak Jonedi has been making some of the favourites using chickpea flour, rice flour and a good amount of spices. Lots of beautiful little biscuits. Yeah, this mm. is Sultana's biscuit with saffron. Ooh. Yeah, we normally, you uh, know, uh, breakfast, you know, tea, coffee. You've got to love a culture yeah. that has sweet biscuits for breakfast. Yeah. And Danish, with the custard cream with cinnamon. Danish. Danish, In yeah. Persia. In no. Persia. <laughs> <laughs> as for desserts, there's one favourite that appears on dessert menus, as well as being a cool summer snack. It's called faluda, a sweet ice dessert with rose water and flavoured with lime, sour cherry or strawberry. Sometimes it's served with saffron ice cream. It's something that is very good for hot weather. But what it has inside, especially the lemon and the crushed ice that's inside. So it's like a sort of exotic snow cone with noodles in it? Yeah. Restaurateur Jalal Dastyari is a devotee. He was born in Azerbaijan and grew up in Tehran where he was a police officer. Later moving to Australia and opening Anahita restaurant 10 years ago. He starts by freezing a mix of water and sugar cooked to syrup, then slightly thawing and teasing out any hard lumps. Hard work, eh? Not very good condition. <laughs> Better. I have new respect for this dessert now. Yeah, it's even cold holding the bowl. Mm -hmm. Must be freezing, hard. Yeah, freezing, huh? Yeah. Are we ready now? <laughs> It's a crazy <laughs> dessert. It is. <laughs> he adds cooked rice vermicelli noodles to the icy mix. So the noodles sort of freeze up and harden. Yeah, frozen, frozen hard. 
Ah. And that's what we want. A bit rose water and so on. Mm -hmm. Nothing? Yeah. Okay. Mm. There are three kinds to have it. Mm -hmm. One is with the lime juice. Another one is with the strawberry. Oh, that's a wild colour. Okay. And another one is popular in Iran as this one, sour cherry. Mmm, it looks good. So what's your favourite? My favourite is that. The lime? Yeah, the lime. Mmm. How is it? Oh, it's lovely. Yeah. And I haven't had the noodles yet. Mmm. They're hard. I think this has to be one of the most unusual desserts I've ever eaten. <laughs> mm. On our next safari, the colourful world of English food, with old favourites like fish and chips, pork pies, pub grub and a glorious summer pudding. There's an old Persian joke and they say, why don't they eat calipoche at night? And the answer is, because you won't wake up in the morning. <laughs>